Hi, my name is Ben Jones, and we're going to learn how to make tileable textures. Uh, if you go to cgtextures.com, uh, you can download textures that already are tiled for you, uh, but today we're going to learn how to make our own. So I just grabbed this texture right here and opened it up inside of Photoshop. All right. So what we need to do is make it into a square texture. And so what I'll do is just click and drag with the marquee tool. Uh, you can switch to the marquee tool by clicking this button right here or pressing M. Uh, so we have that selection. Uh, to get a square selection with the marquee tool, if you hold down Shift, it'll constrain it to be a square. So we're just going to copy that and make a new document and click OK and paste it in there and then go up to image and image size and we're going to make this 1024 by 1024 at 72 dpi all right and now um, let's duplicate this layer so control j and we're going to apply an offset filter to this image and what the offset filter does is it offsets uh, your texture it, it slides it uh, across. If I just move this sli slider over, you can kind of see what it does. It, it wraps your image around. Uh, so if I type in 512 by 512, we'll get all of the edges um, in the center of the image. And this is useful because um, it, it's going to make our job a lot easier to get rid of these seams by having all of them lined up in the middle. Okay, so you might be wondering um, if you can just use the, the new content aware fill tool to make seamless textures. And you can, but it's not quite as good as what we're going to be doing today. Um, I'll show it to you um, and we can come back and compare after we're done. So I'm just going to do uh, control J to duplicate uh, this image and I'm just going to make a selection around the center and go up to edit and fill content aware and it's going to take a second to think and there we go um, it looks okay now let's let's get to the technique that I like to use uh, what I like to do is actually first go back to my original image and grab a section from it so just grab a section um, there and I'll paste that right in the middle of my image and merge that down uh, what that does is it, it helps get rid of the the center of where those seams are and that's like your worst section um, to deal with so by doing this we just effectively get rid of uh, the worst section of the image um, so now we have to deal with these seams right here and around uh, this image that we just pasted in. And to do that, what I like to use is I like to use the patch tool. And you might have the spot healing brush selected, but if you click and hold on it, you can switch it to the patch tool. So the patch tool is really cool. What you do is you just click and drag out um, around an area that you don't like and then go and sample from another area uh, that that will kind of match up so you just click and drag and, and select the area of the image that you want to sample from and then let go and then what it will do is it will um, kind of fade out the edges and, and blend them really nicely uh, and I mean like you can you can be really sloppy with this uh, I mean it's good to try and match it up but honestly you can you can be pretty sloppy. I, mean, no, I don't really like that one. I, what I just did there, I, I didn't like because it had some really bad blending. Um, but in general, you can be pretty sloppy with it. So let's just sample that. Uh, one thing that you do want to be aware of is if you go up to the edge, so like if I do this and then sample, 
it's going to blend really strangely on the edges. Like it got really dark right here and brighter right there. Um, you want to avoid uh, changing the, the edges of your image after you've applied the offset filter. Uh, because after you apply the offset filter, um, you shouldn't be touching the edges because the edges are already seamless. Uh, what you want to deal with is the seams that um, are in the center of the image now. So let's just deal with that really quick. And uh, try and what I'm trying to do is kind of match up uh, what I'm sampling to what is around. Uh, my selection. Try and match up the blocks a little bit. But like I said, I mean, you can you can be pretty uh, messy with this tool. It, it does a great job uh, blending the images. Um, I mean, this this technique works pretty well for this uh, sort of thing for bricks. Um, it works amazingly well uh, on things like grass and uh, you know dirt. Uh, if you want you can add more to your selection by holding down shift and then clicking and dragging and that will add to your selection and then uh, to take away from your selection if you hold down alt and drag it will subtract from your selection. Let me just try and line this up real quick. All right. It's already getting hard to find where all the seams are. Um that looks pretty good. I mean there there's definitely some issues with this like if you really came up close on here, you could kind of sort of see that this might not be how the bricks were made. But uh, it, in general, it does a pretty good job. Uh, and we can compare this to uh, the content aware fill. So this is what we did with the patch tool. And this is what was with content aware fill. Um, I, I prefer the patch tool just because the content aware fill, you kind of lose some of that. Uh, sharpness and detail that you get from just using the patch tool and sampling from your image. Um, we can we can test this out really quick to see how well it tiles uh, by copying our image and making a new document. I'll make this 4096 by 4096 and paste it in there. And if you have snap on it will just snap into place really easily. I'll just paste it in like four times and merge this down and duplicate it and bring it down and duplicate it and bring it down and uh, there you go a tiling texture made in like five minutes probably all right um, that's about it this is Ben Jones hope you enjoyed this tutorial bye bye